Welcome back to the Southern Quality Ford Friday Night Blitz. Let's start things off in Louisiana. Let's do it, Wesley. Game of the night. John Curtis battling Bird at Lee Hedges. To the second half we go. Bird looks to strike first. Lake Lambert finding Elijah Bower breaks the tackle, brought down inside the five. It's zero to zero at this point. We're in the second half of this game, and that's going to lead to the first score of the night. Lake Lambert extending the ball over the goal line. It's seven to nothing. Bird now. John Curtis thinks they got the stop. Refs say no dice. That's that's good for the score. Curtis answers though. Dagan Cox pitches it to Caleb Span. Span wins the race to the pylon. He tied at seven. Patriots weren't done. It's Span again. Breaks free from the jacket defense. Look at him go. There he is. Jogging his way in Break the, the score. Break the tape, baby. It's 13 to seven. John Curtis. Huge play here though. So at the end of the first half, they missed a field goal. Here, missing the extra point, it's 13 to seven. Curtis Bird answers Mitchell Ramsey. Running hard, look at Ramsey. Cutting across the defense, still on his feet. Pushed out of bounds at the 10 yard line in the Yellow Jackets. Finish off the drive. Jason Little falls over the goal line and the extra point is good. 14-13 Yellow Jackets, Carson Bruno. The legend, a legendary play here. A legend Picking is off born. Buddy Taylor to give the Yellow Jackets the ball with two minutes remaining on fourth and two. Jackets try to ice this one. William Berry brought down, bring out the chains just short. So John Curtis gets one more chance. Final play of regulation. Taylor going to try and put everything he has under this one. Jumps over a defender, tosses it up, but Junior Brown Sealing the game with the interception and Bird. They move on to the state championship game. They win 14 to 13. Here's head coach Mike Suggs and Carson Bruno describing his game winning play after the game. This game was like this season. I mean, uh, you know, you saw the fight and determination in our players. I mean, that, that program, everybody knows the quality of that program and that coaching staff and what they've done. and. Uh, to come in here and fight like we did, I mean, we knew it was going to be a dog fight, and it was all night long. And uh, you know, to be able to to win it by an extra point, you know, that's that's just something special. And you know, we knew we knew they were going to be doing something tricky right there, second to last uh, offensive drive for them. And you know, I just kind of got a feel because I was getting up field uh, all night trying to get some pressure because we knew they were passing it. And I got a feel, and I realized I wasn't blocked, but I was already too close. You know what I'm saying? I was already too close to the quarterback, so I had to keep going. And then I, re he, I realized it was screen, but I had to keep going. And he cocked his arm back, and I just put my hands up right into my hands. And then from there, adrenaline took over. I think I lowered my shoulder, and then I tripped up. But, you know, it was amazing. An amazing game. Bird moving on to the state championship. Spot on the line in the Division Four state championship game. Southern Lab and Calvary. Calvary hosting the Kittens in this one. First quarter, Joseph Wilson. Joseph Wilson is explosive. He shows it right there. And that would set up the first score of the night for Calvary. Wilson to the end zone. He scores. Surprisingly, Southern Lab up 8-7 at this point. That leads short-lived. The Cavs, it's Wilson once more. Make it 14-8. Landry Liddy to Wilson. The Kittens, they weren't done. Don't let that name fool you. This is a good football team. They find the end zone. We're tied up at 14 with some time left before halftime. Now, Landry Liddy, he doesn't like that time. He's going to break the lead as he finds Roderick Harris. Roderick rules. He finds the end zone. 21-14 Cavs at the break. Let's head to the third quarter now. The rain is gone, so the fog is out. That's how this works. Calvary's defense is as well. They get the big sack. They turn the ball over on down. Under three minutes left in the game, Wilson puts the cherry on top of a state championship appearance. 24 to 14, Calvary can run the clock out. And they're headed to the state title game. Here's Coach Gwynn and Landry Liddy. I told them before the game, a lot of schools, a lot of kids never get the opportunity to play in a semifinal game. And, uh, you know, to make the most of it. But we may not get back to one for a while. And, uh, but, and, and they did. 
super excited. I'm proud of these guys. I couldn't be more proud of them. I love these guys. These are my best friends, and uh, I'm just excited to show everybody that we're going to win state in two weeks. You know, this is a great group of guys, and they, they work through all the stuff we've had to go through, and they've never let up a beat since June, and, you know, they deserve this. They played well tonight, and, uh, you know, we're, we're so thrilled. We're, we're, we're really a brotherhood this year. We're just a bunch of brothers that love each other, and we just play for each other. It's going to be a good Christmas, and uh, we got two weeks to get ready. Two weeks to get ready. Can't wait for that game. My goodness. Do I have to wait two weeks for that game? I don't think it's fair. You do. Logansport on the road tonight, taking on, taking on Oak Grove in the quarterfinals, starting things off. Logansport quarterback. Nice little keeper there down to the 32 yard line. They can't cash in Oak Grove's Deuce Claymont to Ron Creighton. Creighton barreling his way down the field. Claymont now. It's his turn. Claymont. So, yeah, what's going on here? And decides to keep the ball. Nice little stiff arm there. Masters the A button, he's tackled out of bounds, and then Creighton here. Creighton's going to punch things in. He's in for the score. All Oak Grove in this one, carrying the defender there. It's 67 of 14. Haynesville, they were looking for some better luck than Logan Sport tonight. On the road at East Iberville, first drive of the game, East Iberville. How about a 17-play drive to get things started, Wes? It's hard to do. Carlisle Joseph finds Jade Williams. That'll move the sticks. It's what you need to do on a 17-play drive, right? That drive would stall, though. King and Goodwick with the sack. No points in 17 plays. That's not ideal. But at least they were winning the time of possession battle. Second quarter now. Always find the positive. Right. With the ball, Kedrick Grider cuts it back against the grain. What a run. The Golden Tornado, they're up 7-0. Now, just before the end of the first half, weird play here. East Iberville's driving, but they've got no timeouts left. It's third and goal. Check this out. Christopher Boudreaux gets it around the end, extends the ball to the goal line, but he can't score. And there's less than 10 seconds left. Coaches, they're trying to call the play. East Iberville trying to get lined up. They are going to get it off. But Haynesville, they step in and call a timeout with five seconds left in the half. That gives the Tigers a chance to huddle up. They call a play, and on fourth and goal, Skyler Jones, he finds the end zone with no time left. Extra point is no good, but that wouldn't matter. 7 6 half, Haynesville leads, but they fall 25 to 15, East Iberville tonight. Manny on the road out of meet. The talent on both of these teams really hard to measure, and it was on full display tonight. First play from scrimmage. I can't even sit down with my nachos. John Walker dropping bombs to Coral Merity for the score. Warriors take an early 7-0 lead. Points, points, points. That was the story tonight. Ensuing drive. Manny answers right back. Terrence Williams, he's going to play D1 college football. Look at the grown man go. He's into the end zone for the tying score. Manny, they also scored a two-point conversion, so they actually take the lead. They're up 8-7, jump to the second. More Manny, they lead 14-7. London Williams. Nice spin move there, breaks off the tackle. He finds Pater, Manny leading 21-7. Now later in the quarter, Amit not going away quietly. Brennan Harrell takes the handoff. Harrell showing you the speed. He's in for the score. Amit goes into the half down 21-14. But Manny, they win tonight. They advance to the semifinals over Amit 34-30. Those Amit Warriors are tough. The Wildcats of Destrahan, they're tough. They're taking on the Bearcats of Ruston. Let's start this one off in the first half. Destran going for it on fourth down. Jai Eugene trying to find some running room, but he slips up. Jalen Penninger comes up with the sack. It's a turnover on downs. Big play for the Bearcats. Now, later on, Destran, they get the ball back. They'll hand it off to their freshman running back. They've got a history of good running backs there. Shane Lee is one of them. Huge gain, but the Wildcats unable to score. That was a common theme tonight. Jaden Osborne now for Ruston. He gets the snap, drops back, finds a receiver, as the ball is tipped into the hands of a fellow Bearcat. You don't see that every day, Wesley. What a catch. Now, both teams, they could not score through three quarters. But Destrahan, they were the only team to score 6 nothing. They eliminate Rustin. Coming up, we head back on over to Texas. Texas High hosting Lane Creek. We've got the highlights next.